Come on in and uh, have a seat. Um, hey, I'm Ben Turner. I am louder, louder. Hey, I'm Ben Turner. I'm uh, my day job is a support engineer at uh, Flywheel. Um, before that, I was and I started that maybe eight months ago. Um, before that, I was doing a lot of uh, freelance WordPress development and uh, just mucking around with the terminal and and all that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm supposed to stay loud. Yes, sorry. <laughs> um, so if you want to check out what I'm blogging about, I occasionally post random obscure things at passionsplay.com. Uh, you can also find me, hit me up on uh, GitHub, um, and we can geek out a bit. But um, So today I'm here to talk to you about using local by Flywheel. And um, so... Uh, if you're here, you may or may not have heard about it, but basically it's a tool for managing WordPress sites on your local machine. And so if you're familiar with like MAMP or VVV or any of these other tools that help kind of uh, scaffold out a WordPress site on your local machine so you can break it and tinker with it and uh, do development on it, um, this is in that family of technologies. So um, in a real basic sense, it has a nice... GUI for creating sites. So, oh, this is not right. <laughs> okay, that'll be good. We'll size it down. Um, okay, so uh, in terms of a GUI setup, all you have to do is click the big plus button to uh, start the, the creation. Um, it'll ask you a few questions like, hey, what's, what's the URL you want to use for this machine? How do you want to access it? Um, ask you different things like, what kind of an environment do you want? So uh, what version of PHP? What, uh, you want Nginx or Apache? Um, one last little sort of thing like, what, what's your WordPress admin user? How, how do you want that set up? And once that's clicked through and done in, in like half a minute, maybe less, you got that nice little site with the green dot telling you that it's up, it's ready. Um, along with all this information about what, you know, what that site is. And you can click that big button, visit site, and you've got a plain vanilla WordPress site. So within like half a minute, you're up and running with a new sandbox to try out ideas, try out a plugin, try out a new theme. Um, same vanilla WordPress dashboard. Um, so that's like creating something brand new, uh, blank from scratch, but they, it also has this concept of a blueprint, which uh, under the hood, it's just like a database dump and a WP content folder with all the plugins. But like if you're doing lots of WooCommerce sites, you can you know, install WooCommerce, handful of uh, add-ons for it, storefront theme, and then say, hey, I want a blueprint of this. And so you almost take a snapshot of it. And then from here, it's just a, one, one button click to scaffold out a new site with your sort of preferred sandbox of like, this is what I develop in. Like, I'm, I'm, I do things with Divi theme or whatever. Um, so, so that's kind of how local lets you scaffold up really quickly. Um, once you go through, do your dev work, you you've like what you have, you know, you're not going to keep your site on your local machine. So how do you get it out? Well, it's pretty, pretty much just a right click and an export to, again, like dump the database, zip it all up and uh, all your plugins in the theme, and uh, then you can take it wherever. So to another host, um, you know, you can exclude certain files, like all those large uh, plugin uh, backups. You can just say, I don't want those part of it. Um, and, you know, again, like depending on the size of the site, how much media you have, um, it's done in like a minute, just exporting and ready for you to uh, back it up, like save that as a snapshot of you know where the project was at a certain time, or shoot it up somewhere else. Um, one thing I really like in terms of just like deployments, if if you do hosting with Flywheel, they they have that sort of built in. So um, like in this case, my my own blog is Passions Play, and I have it connected to. Um, the Pla Passions Play site on Flywheel servers. So from here, I can just pull down from the server or push up to uh, Flywheel. And it's kind of that same thing. It'll export the database. 
um, zip up the WP content uh, folder and fire it up to, to the server. Um, you can optionally exclude the database. So like if you're working on an e-commerce site, you don't want to necessarily fire up all of your, uh, fire up your database and overwrite those orders that have uh, taken place while you were developing. Um, so that's a, that's a great way, especially like in my day-to-day -day job where I'm troubleshooting and firing up, you know, a couple dozen sites every day. Um, I can just real quickly create a new site or import a site by just getting a zip and dragging and dropping. And, uh, and just as importantly, I, I can just delete it really quickly. So these WordPress sites become really disposable and really quick to, to work with. Um, but maybe you're here because you're on the developer track, right? And you're like, I, I want terminal things. And um, I know I initially didn't think local was, uh, gave me that much power to really interact with, with these sites from, like, the, from the command line. Um, like, I'm a, I'm a pretty, pretty geeky terminal guy. And uh, it's really easy to just fire it up. And you can right click, open an SSH tunnel to it. and you're basically inside the site container, so all the files are, you know, in your public, in your app slash public directory, um, and you also have WPCLI to interact with your WordPress site um, in in that sort of fashion. And I know you're thinking, like, okay, cool, but I already do that with MAMP or with VVV or whatever your flavor is. Or uh, you know, Termux, maybe you're just firing up all of your uh, sites that way. Um, one of the things that I think is cool, though, is that because the underlying technology of local uses Docker, is that it's a neat way for you to start playing with containerization. So, OK, local, Docker, containers. Um, how many people have know about this stuff or kind of, OK. So maybe, maybe some people have heard it, maybe even played with it. I'm going to give like a quick rundown um, about it. If you're new, well, so, so to rewind just a little bit, like looking at local more technically, it basically is an Electron app, which is like using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as a desktop app. Um, and that Electron app coordinates different things, different Docker containers. Um, and with the idea, it's focused on WordPress, right? It's not, uh, it makes certain decisions where if it was working on a Drupal site, it may not do certain other things. Or Magento would be a whole different set of considerations. Um, so if we're going to make this sort of an analogy, local is like a producer of a movie. It, it doesn't do a lot of the actual hands-on dirty work, but it, it delegates the heavy lifting, right? So when, when you say to local, hey, click that plus button, I want to create a site, it lines up everything to make it happen. And, and continuing that analogy, WordPress is that star actor, right? So it's, it needs everything that it needs to, uh, to work correctly and to uh, fire up. Um, so PHP, MySQL, um, that environment is Docker, and Docker manages those needs, right? It, it'll line up those different processes and encapsulate those in, into individual environments. And those environments are called containers, um, which are all managed and run within VirtualBox. So if that's all kind of crazy crash course, it might help to visualize um, how those interact and work with local. So when you install local, it shows up on your laptop. Local will then install VirtualBox, which will then create a virtual machine on your, on your laptop. Um, and inside, we'll install Docker. So that's kind of how those three main things interact. But then on the day-to-day, -day, when we're clicking the Create Site, it's creating a container inside of which is WordPress. And you, you can create at any number. You know, you're limited by basically the memory of your laptop. Um, so that's. That's great, but how do we leverage that? So um, since local comes with Docker and, and Docker machine, which is a command for kind of managing that virtual machine, we can use those individual um, vendor binaries to, to interact with it through our terminal. So in this case, uh, this is me on a Mac. 
but I'm just aliasing Docker machine for the one that's located within the vendor directory. Um, you can always install Docker and just use that one, um, but this is if you were wanting to kind of dive in and just get started uh, without having to install any other dependencies. Um, the only other ca caveat here is we basically have to tell Docker where we want to execute our commands. And so in this case, we're setting up this terminal to be like, hey, Docker machine, I want you to set up the environment to be using our local by flywheel virtual machine, which is that one that was created when uh, VirtualBox was installed. So what happens then is you can start inspecting those containers, those little boxes of WordPress sites, right? Um, I like piping Docker PS. So Docker PS is like list the processes, list the Docker containers that are running. I like piping that into less and getting it so that um, you don't get these long lines that wrap around and cause weird um, sort of flow issues. But as you can see here, like there's all these different um, images, right? So this would be like a preferred environment which mimics Flywheel's production servers. But there's also these custom ones where maybe I chose a different version of PHP or a different version of MySQL. And the second command when kind of getting started with Docker is the inspect one. So that, that allows you to really say, okay, I, I know that there are all these containers, but, but what are they, right? So if we were to look at this, we can inspect this container ID, and it's basically just a JSON blob of metadata. And you can also inspect and format that output. Because it is JSON, you can say, well, I just want to know what the host config and the binds are, what, what, the, um, what folder is mounted to the app directory within the container. Um, and so with that, you start being able to very powerfully script what you want to do and, um, and, and interact with the containers on a much larger scale as opposed to just interacting on one site at one time. So, so maybe, maybe that's a little abstract, right? So, so one of the powerful things, since this is WordPress, is WPCLI allows you to interact with WordPress in a very um, powerful command line way. So I just recently found out that WPCLI has this dash SSH flag. And one of those uh, protocols, one of those schemes that you can use is Docker, Docker Compose, or Vagrant even. But you're basically saying, I want to connect and run these WPCLI commands on a remote machine. In our case, those are those Docker containers, right? Those are quote unquote remote, even though they're on our local laptop, they're a remote instance. So let's just kind of look at a almost conc a more concrete example, right? Like, what if we wanted to list all the installed themes for all the sites that are running right now, all those green dots, right? Well, bash scripting is, is here, right? If we were to break this problem down, we need to get a list of the running, <coughs> running containers. We also need to do something with those. So I personally have been tinkering, so I've got a, a bunch of other containers that are not WordPress containers running in that machine. So using this filter flag, I can say, hey, any, any container that's published the port 3306, which is the default uh, MySQL database port, uh, I want to list those. And, and that's just sort of a shorthand for things that have a database running. You can filter by all sorts of other parameters and stuff or using that format. Um, you know, format flag to, to get what you want. But what we have here is just a, a basic list of each container ID that we want to work on. So from there, it's just a matter of using that within a bash for loop and um, echoing the container ID, uh, getting the site URL, as well as listing the theme. And what ends up happening is you fire that off and you get a list that's really easy to be like, oh, hey, look, I'm all up to date. This is awesome. Or, or, oh, man, I've got all these different vulnerabilities that I just read about on the WordFence blog or whatever, right? Um, for me, that's, that's kind of where these scripting potential, 
this scripting potential gets really powerful is um, I can operate on the whole suite of containers that and maybe it's a cluster of sites that are pretty similar, but I want to make sure uh, I'm interacting with them in, in the kind of a batch kind of way. Um, that's, I guess I'm pretty close on time, and I, I can talk more about this sort of geeky stuff, uh, but I do want to open it up for maybe a question or two. Um, and if uh, anyone has anything, go for it. Yeah. Our slideshow's available for later viewing. Yeah, uh, yeah this is, um, it's all on my GitHub. There's a, there's a link to a repo. Um, and I can also tweet out the, uh, the URL. But um, it's uh, PP presentations, developer workflow uh, with local, I think is the repo name. So that's where all those notes are. Yeah. Yeah. How would you handle plugins for sites on this environment? I guess it kind of depends on. So, so it's local isn't enforcing any sort of way that you need to do plugins. Um, I guess uh, for me, it's sort of a rule of thumb, like how confident am I in these plugins? If I've got a crap load of plugins that uh, you know I'm I'm curious of the update, I'll definitely pull them down and and try updates. And like in the case of this, like maybe I I know that there's a bunch of updates for one specific plugin, you can fire through and do, like, instead of WP theme list, you could go through and do, like, WP plugin update all and just update all the plugins. And then from there, if you're hosted on Flywheel, push them up. Or if you're hosted somewhere else, I don't know what that workflow would look like. Maybe it's more of a hassle to zip it up and fire it up. but. Um, Sort of depends on on how how you are deploying. So, uh, yeah, everybody has their own sort of way of doing things, right? So, anyone else got a couple minutes left? Yeah. Have you used it with a remote docker host at all, or is it all docker machine local? Um, I I don't typically use it for like remote Docker management. Um, and like Flywheel itself, you're, you're not interacting with containers or anything on their servers. Um, but I mean, in theory, these are all sandboxed little machines, so you could wrap them up. And uh, isn't that what they say that's so amazing about Docker is that you can make it once and deploy anywhere? So um, I, I think it's a really cool technology. and not least because it, it allows a very isolated environment. Um, one other sort of use case that I've been using will, is that I'll create a, just a blank WordPress container and then use that as what I fire off the like plug-in unit tests and stuff within. So I know that it's a completely sandboxed environment. There's no external things happening. And, and it is really disposable, right? It's just a matter of trashing that container and firing up another one. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, hit me up outside if you want to talk more or, um, yeah. So I think we're going to have uh, RJ up, I think, right? Awesome.